All right, this is a build summary. I can I have other detailed videos on individual parts and a little bit more on the build on other videos, but I'm going to try to do this one quickly. This is a new computer, desktop computer that I built late uh, 2019, December, based on the AMD 3950X new chip. Um, so 16 core, 32 threads new chip that came out and it's really impressive i went off until for the first time in probably decades and a bit nervous about that but so far it's amazing um what i what you're looking at is basically the corsair 680x rgb black case and it's a medium-sized tower cube um it's uh, glass front, glass top. It has uh, some USB ports too, and then USB-C, and then a headphone jack, power, and uh, reset buttons. Wish there's a few more ports on front, but they're modern. It has a clear case on the side, it's difficult to see. I have my graphics card 2080 Ti, from EVGA uh, for the win version. Uh, it has the chip in there. And I'll take it here. Let's see. Door that opens up pretty easily. Got the Corsair cooler, the HC115X, uh, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And I had to add some fans below from Noctua. I replaced the fan on back with the 140 millimeter version and added two down below. More on that later. I am only using one of those. And I'm using the stock fans that came with the case up front and the Corsair cooler fans are also stock. Um, that's the case and I'm using uh, 64 gigabytes total of the Corsair Vengeance memory at uh, 3600 speed. Okay, at the motherboard, I went with an uh, gigabyte uh, X570 or a six stream uh, motherboard. I had some specific criteria. I wanted ATX size. This ended up being extended ATX, which is not great, but I settled with that. But I wanted three NVM NVMe slots. I wanted at least six hard drive spots, set of ports. I wanted a 10 gig network um, connectivity. Um, and I did not want a fan in the in the on the motherboard, so that's why I went with this. The motherboard seems to be pretty high quality. It's kind of big, heavy, solid. Um, it has uh, fan connectors on the back side, upper right, and that ended up saving me because I needed to add more fans to the case, and uh, so that that was helpful. It's a bit confusing with their own fan connector software that came with it. Uh, versus the Corsair one I had to use. The BIOS of the motherboard uh, is nice. It's easy to follow. It, it looks good, simple. The Windows software they have is old and clunky looking and it's always pushing uh, their own, some third-party software like Chrome to, for me to install when I just want to do a driver update. So I'm not a big fan of that. But so far, so good with the, with the motherboard. All right, the power supply, I'm a Corsair fan and I had problems with getting enough power in the past in another build. So I just probably overbought here, but the HX1000 power supply is what I got here. Easy install, um, you know, issues, I had enough cabling. Uh, so it seems okay so far. All right, storage, I classified this in tiers. This is the highest tier of storage, fastest. Um, I went with the Sabre NVMe Gen 4 version that fits the motherboard and AMD chip. It's very fast. Okay, like I said, I bought two of these. 
I bought, I was nervous about the Sabrent brand. I don't know much about them, but really only had two choices for two terabytes. And that was a gigabyte version, which is $50 higher than these. He's had good reviews out there. And it seems like the technology is all made by Toshiba anyway. So I took a chance on these and so far so good. They worked right away. Um, no bugs, no, I'm getting full speed on both of them. One is my boot drive, and I always fight with storage management on boot drive. That's why I wanted two terabytes. I have certain sof softwares from Adobe that they just, no matter what you point to, it always goes back and puts a bunch of cache files on the C drive. So it's, it's, I don't like to manage that storage all the time, so I wanted a little bit more. And then my other drive I put on some, some games and I put on, uh, I use it as a cache drive. So any uh, software that uses cache, scratch disks, the Adobe stuff, DaVinci Resolve uh, on one photo, I put all that cache on that drive and I'm, I'm seeing a pretty big difference in how those software apps perform. So pretty impressed with the, this technology so far. One other thing about the NVMEs from Sabrent, I did not have to use the heat shields that come with the uh, products. The motherboard I had had heat shields built in. They are easy to install. I would say that um, if you're considering maybe delaying your purchase of these um, um, sticks to put in later, you're gonna have to take everything apart on the on the motherboard for the most part to install them. So might want to think about doing it now rather than later. All right, some tier three storage spinning disk, Toshiba X300, 12 terabyte. I use this for um, original media storage and, and usage. Um, so video files, large picture files, and I back it up to NAS. I find it's just easier to have it locally and then back up to, to NAS. I've been having good uh, experience with this brand, high performing, and uh, as far as the competitors, the price point has been pretty good lately, but do shop around. I kind of rotate between Toshiba, Seagate for the most part right now. And one other comment is, I'd be very cautious about buying a NAS hard drive or a security surveillance hard drive and using it in your desktop for um, active storage. I've read that you can do that but i've tried that in the past and i've had some conflicts performance issues just acting funny it's hard to describe but i highly recommend against doing that go with the drives that are designated as internal pc performance drives Logitech keyboard G915, I believe. Right, a Logitech gaming mouse. I like it. It's medium size. The buttons are simple on the side. It works great. All right, headphones. So these are very specific to my gaming. And if you're going to game, playing FPS, hearing footsteps is an important. So headphones is the way to do it. I have some other nice speakers that are surround sound, but they, they don't cut it. You gotta wear headphones. So I did a lot of research with uh, Logitech and or a lot of research on what are the best gaming headphones. It came back to Logitech. I am a fan of the company, but they ended up having the best criteria in regards to what was important to me. I have a separate video on these, but uh, I wanted the surround sound. I wanted big drivers. Um, comfortable, uh, wireless, uh, these fit all my criteria. There, there's some flaws with it, but they're better than the previous version. Battery life could be better. You could plug in the USB cord a little bit easier and the comfort on the very top and the plastic uh, can be a bit better and the battery life, I wish it was a bit longer. So they're not perfect, but uh, I am happy with these. And I think they are, at least in 2020, January, they're probably the best on the market. Logitech Brio webcam, it's a 4K webcam, and it's probably the highest resolution Logitech has in 2020. It's okay, it's easy to use. I think most all webcam quality is not good. Uh, this is not different, it's just a bigger resolution, but I think it's a little soft on the image, it's not very sharp. It's not clear. 
it's just a bigger image if that makes sense like a cell phone from two to three years ago may even have even be better image quality but it, it's 4k it's all right for a webcam I have an Elgato Stream Deck. This is more of a fun toy for me. I mainly use it just to watch the CPU utilization on there and start a few apps, change some lights. But other than that, uh, I don't use it too much. It's kind of fun. When you're building a computer, there's various parts that you forget about that you need, but uh, I needed to get a USB, further USB connector uh, attached to the USB 3 header in the motherboard to be able to use the IQ software. Uh, to fully see the CPU and the RGB uh, fans for Corsair. I had a significant hard drive cooling issue with the case. I can explain more on that in further detail, but I had to buy some extra fans. I used the Noctua ones. I got these industrial ones, high performance. I should have got some regular ones, but these are, don't buy these for your consumer personal PC. They're going to be way too loud. Go with the regular Noctura ones. I ended up uh, disconnecting one and uh, using the BIOS to lower the noise and power level of one of the fans. But I had a hard drive problem that I've now worked through in, you know, as a workaround. But it's, yeah, it's, that's one of the problems I had with the build. Okay, so just a variety of other things I needed, wanted rather. Um, my old case had a, a bay that I had SDCF micro SD card readers. I had it built into the case and that went away. Uh, it's not on that case that I have now. I had a keyboard that had a USB attachment built in that I was using my fingerprint security reader. That went away, so I needed some USB ports that were near me on my desk. So I had to extend um, through a cable uh, USB-C to a hub on my desk, which has the fingerprint reader, as well as some further USB ports along with the SD and micro SD readers. Okay, just a summary of the other parts here. Um, again, Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like the video if you did, leave a comment. Um, I'll do some follow-up videos more on the inside of the case. I'm not good at cable management and I've been delaying that a little bit, but it's, it's a pretty wild mess in there, but it, it's working fine. It's performing good. The, the cooling is, is <laughs> probably better than necessary at this point. I'm still working through some, some, Cons not concerns, but um, tuning up the fans, um, that kind of stuff. But overall, I'm very happy with it. Um, check out my other videos I'll do in more depth on the components. I have also created a Google Docs summary of all the parts and descriptions and why I purchased them with a kind of a post build thoughts on it. So check that out. That link to it is at the in the description. So um, again, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and comment.